Hello, uh, my name is Joe Matthews. I don't have a, a, a contact card on here, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, this is a, a hand-wired ortholinear keyboard, a love story. Um, you know, it, it started a long time ago when I wanted to make my own keyboard. Didn't feel capable of doing that. Take off my jacket. But uh, let me see, what's my first slide? I don't even know. Oh yeah, the inspiration for my keyboard is actually a Plank keyboard. And they had one of these on Mass Drop, and I was like, I'm so gonna get this, this looks so cool. And then the delivery date looks like um, sometime in uh, March or April, so it's like, I can't wait that long. So um, I was wondering, what would it take to make my own keyboard? Um, and so I started looking into it. Um, you know, here's essentially a list of parts, kind of the slide's a little bit out of order, but it, the list of parts is, you know, I uh, needed 48 keyboard switches, uh, 48 diodes, diodes are pretty cheap. Uh, solid core wire, um, just, just wire, that's pretty cheap as well. Solder, soldering iron, a laser cutter, and now that's not cheap. <laughs> uh, a microcontroller, and that's either a Teensy or Pro Micro, just these little things. Um, the Pro Micro can use Arduino code, it's pretty cool. Um, but it, but uh, essentially, you know, uh, my wife's kind of watching my tech budget, you know, I, I tend to spend a lot of money on Raspberry Pis and other things, and, um, and so I was like, I need to make this affordable. Um, and so here's the kind of uh, the guide that kind of um, uh, basically showed me it was possible. I was still just, you know, I was running off of pure hope that would all work, uh, but, you know, I, at least it gave me enough information to get started and uh, kind of gave me an outline for what to do. And so uh, I wish I had a picture of it before, but this is the, uh, the disemboweled, uh, completely chopped up keyboard that I had before. And so it, it was a mechanical keyboard with, with cherry brown switches. Uh, you can see the plate there, uh, the little the black plate uh, that, that held all the switches and the PCB in the background. Uh, and you can even see the diodes. I don't know, you can see my mouse? Oh, what happened? Oh no. Kimberly, what did I do? All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back. I think there's a laser cutter option here. Oh, or a laser pointer option. Woo! Okay, here we go. We're back on track, guys. All right, and so uh, yeah, you can even see the diodes right here from the old keyboard PCB. And so I murdered my keyboard uh, for the switches, basically, and I was able to get. Uh, I think. 89, no, like 84 switches? I don't remember, not important, moving on. Uh, but it, it, a switch is a, essentially like 25 cents to like 50 cents each, uh, depending on when and where you get it. Um, you know, like five years ago, they were more expensive, but you know, you just had to get them from China basically. But long story short, these are authentic cherry switches. That's not really a big deal, but um, it, it saved a whole lot of money just uh, murdering this keyboard. All right. Uh, a special thanks to Western Plastics. They changed their name. I don't remember what their new name is. I think it's uh, Plastics Alliance or something like that. But they helped me by giving me some scrap plastic uh, for the case. That also saved me a whole lot of money. Um, I called and asked, and they were like, sure. And I was like, thank you. And so shout out to them. Uh, they're here in Oklahoma City, and they, uh, they do a lot of plastic design for uh, industrial and uh, red, uh, commercial settings and stuff like that. So uh, real quick, you know, to kind of uh, make this all make sense, I'm going to do a real quick demonstration on how I made the case for the keyboard, because the case is what holds everything together. So here's a keyboard layout editor. If you're, if you're a keyboard aficionado, you may be familiar with this already. So I went here uh, to presets, I went to plank, and it basically just shows you, this is traditionally used to design uh, keycaps and like, you know, I want to see what my keyboard's going to look like, that sort of thing. Uh, but it also allows you to design any keyboard that you ever could think of. And so here's the Plank keyboard that we saw before. And you go to the raw data, and this is what that keyboard looks like uh, in JSON. And so I'm just gonna copy that. And then uh, the second part of that, oh, where did my presentation go? <laughs> Kimberly! All right, here we go. The second part is that you take that uh, raw data, paste it in, and uh, you get some options here. So this is, so I kind of skipped around. This is uh, by a Swill, uh, Swill KB, 
Uh, but so this guy's on uh, GitHub, and he made this tool, and it's amazing. Uh, he also made a uh, Golang library to do this through the command line, but it makes it nice to do it through online. It makes it so everyone can do it uh, pretty easily. And so you paste in uh, the layout from Keyboard Layout Editor. You choose the uh, switch type. I chose this type because you can open it up, you can uh, lube the key, the, the key switches, all kinds of nerdy things that we won't go into. Um, uh, you choose your stabilizer type, that's not really important. But case type, we're gonna go to sandwich, which is what I used. And just real quickly, I'm gonna go through here and set some variables. So I'm gonna do 14 mount holes. Um, so the diameter of the mount holes, like 3.5 millimeters, kind of what my screws ended up being, or uh, my, uh, uh, nuts and bolts to hold it together. Uh, edge width, let's go 10 millimeters, and then fill all this in. So this is the, uh, uh, the edge padding, basically, how much is gonna be around the keyboard. And we're almost done here. Plate corners, let's go ahead and go around it. I'm getting too detailed here. Let's see here, I think it's two millimeter. Okay, and if I did this right, oh, please no errors, okay. So no errors. And here it is. And so this is essentially exactly what I did to create my keyboard. Um, I had two switches here, so this is a one switch space bar, but I ended up doing two. Um, and there you go. So it gives you all the files to laser cut the keyboard. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not some guru. I just, I just have some awesome tools, basically. <laughs> and so moving on, um, I don't know if I'll be able to get back the presentation. So that's the case builder part. Oh, oh. How do I go back? I don't know how to use this, okay. And so uh, basically I put the switches into the plate that holds the, uh, the, uh, the switch itself, and then I hot glued it. You can see like some hot glue here and here, and I did that for all the switches. And then, oh my gosh, okay. And then here's the diode, and this is soldered to one pin of the switch, which goes down into this rail, which connects all the diode soldered pins and then, so basically, essentially, because this is a lot to look at, you have, uh, you have columns and you have rows. So here's the column, and here's the rows. And um, that, that was basically uh, uh, all I had to do. I followed that tutorial that you saw before. And here's the kind of the finished product after the keycaps are on it. This, you know, I didn't make the, this kind of fundamental thing was, you know, circa me five years ago when I thought I was cool. And making my own keyboard, but I, I basically salvaged the key keycaps off of this. I'm a touch typist, so I don't need to see what the, the actual letters on the keys are. And so here's the back of it, though. And this is the Pro Micro, and um, and it's sitting on top of some uh, ESD wrapping, so it doesn't touch all the copper behind it. But essentially, uh, so here's all the rows connected. It's hard to see because this is black wire, but you have one, two, three, four uh, rows here. Um, and then all the columns, you know, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 uh, columns. And, um, and basically you connect those in this orientation. And then I didn't put it in here, but uh, this, I used the QMK um, keyboard uh, software and then basically went to the plank keyboard. Well, actually, it was, yeah. I went to the plank keyboard in that software and had to choose where I put the columns and rows on my Pro Micro and, and remap that, and then it just worked. Um, I don't know, it was kind of a short presentation. Um, any, any questions about it? I don't know. Any at all? It's kind of, it's pressure fit. <laughs> uh, it's, it's one of those things where a lot of, uh, um, so the question was, is the Pro Micro fixed in the case? Uh, but no, it's just pressure fit inside there. Um, and uh, it, it's one of those things where I made this, uh, I think, uh, finished it up last week. And so uh, I kind of, it's just kind of working at this point. Um, I didn't really necessarily, uh, think all the way through on how to like make sure everything uh, is properly connected and all that kind of stuff. I think I could use a lot of hot glue and just kind of make it work. Um, but uh, I think 
right now, as long as I don't disconnect, did anyone disconnect the cable? No, okay, good. Uh, it's kind of hard because I have to unscrew everything to put the cable back into the, the Pro Micro. Um, but uh, did you have a question? Yes. Um, what is happening with the interface? Man, I don't know. I'm not an electrical engineer. Come on, man. Uh, You've got rows and you've got columns, and the, what the diode does is it prevents any of the other um, keys on the column from activating. So you can look it up, but it's uh, basically it's a matrix keyboard, um, and so it work, the way it works is that each of those um, I/O lines on the micro are ha is using an internal pull-up, or is it pull-up or pull-down? I think it's, I think it's got that must have a pull-up, um, but it has an internal. Oh no, I know what it is. Okay, so it's using um, some of those to actually act as um, to inter it's using the I/O pins to um, as a logic high, and it's using the rest of them as pull downs. And so what it's doing is it's uh, looking when you put a key press down. What it does is you see one of those lines um, getting pulled down when you make contact with the key. And so and the way the matrix works is that it, it knows that um, you've got like a rows and columns. It knows that if you've Put, if you get a, if, if the columns are active high, you know, one of the rows is pulled down, it knows that um, one, of the, uh, the, one of the particular keys has been pressed. The, the online, that or, or, well, that one particular one, because it's, 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 it's indexed based on the rows and col like active col or active high columns and, um, and sensed rows. Um, so it's not, yeah, it's cheaper. So what? It, so the reason why it allows you to basically um, get, I think you get, um, I think you get, I think like n number of um, positions based on how many I/O pins you have. So if you got a, like a four by four matrix, you get 16 um, positions or 16 key presses. Um, the only pro the different the problem though is if you'll see about this when you have a keyboard like if you push like multiple keys down at the same time it won't register them all um, so the trick when you're doing this is that you have to space your keys out so that you aren't likely to hit um, two keys at the same time in the same row so what you'll see is you'll see them interleaved so like like you'll have like row A row B row C row D and then it'll go A B C D A B C D so you don't have the same uh, so when you can press like well, you can that way you can press like a control key and then like A B or C and D together. Um, there's another version called the in key rollover, uh, which means that each one of those keys has its own I/O channel, and so it can actually you can actually push down all the keys all at the same time to get um, to get your button presses. Um, that would have a, a separate um, comparator or a separate, uh, something that's looking at the key press for each key. So if you have, but this, this is when you get like, let's say you've got like 104 keys on your keyboard, you've got 104 IO, IO um, input uh, detectors detecting key presses on it. And so that requires usually special breakout hardware and a little bit more hardware in general. So. Too many questions, you're cut off. But uh, that's my presentation for uh, a love story, uh, hand-wired ortholinear keyboard, nerdiest title ever. All right.